Michael, you mentioned something to me towards the last match. He, uh, at least he's raced at 20, 125? Yeah, 125, okay. yeah. And he ran, how he ran 100, you said? Uh, Thorsten ran 111 or 112 uh, against Danny Brody. Oh, wow. Yeah, 100, 111 or 112 and out. Uh, any expectations you think that you see in this match here? So no. It's hard I, to always pick a winner with great players, you know. I, I, mean, I mean, I think on paper, Thorsten's uh, got a little more odds to win, but pretty close lag there. Well, I think well, if you go by the paper, Thorsten, uh, I believe, would be the a little bit of a favorite over the field. I mean, uh, just right, right, right. with just because he's, he's won everything concerning straight pool. Yeah, in the last, I mean, exactly 20 years. I mean, he's just dominated a pool, uh, straight pool. The slag is fairly close. The players have decided uh, that somebody has won it. I yeah, we'll, we'll know shortly. Okay, so I guess <laughs> I guess they're saying. Uh, that uh, Mario won the lag uh, in this game of straight pool. It's, for the most part, it's a little bit of a disadvantage to break the balls um, because you're really not going to be able to shoot at a ball uh, off the break to start a run. Yeah, I, th I think Mario lost the lag, so he's uh, he racked oh, Mario, himself for oh, that. Oh, okay, it's rack your own. Okay, you got to make sure the back line's tight. So he's just uh, maybe they did that the first track. My fault. I did, I did. I noticed that. Okay, so he's going to send a cue ball four rails around the table here and try to get as close to this corner as you can. But the main thing is to try to get as close to the back rail as possible. Yeah, pretty well executed there. I don't know if Thorson can see the five or not. Yeah, he laid down a pretty good break here. I think you're correct. Uh, by what we can see from the angle, it looks like the five is slightly balked here, about a 15. Um, I th and uh, shooting the one ball, it looks like it might go by that front or three ball, but uh, it's a lot to have to ask for. And even looking here, Michael, I think a safety is even really tough from this angle. It's, I don't see any, too much that he can thin and get back down table. Yeah, I agree with you there. Um, he, he's almost forced to shoot here. I, I mean, think, I might take a back scratch. I think, yes, I, I think a lot of people would consider taking a scratch here and just putting the the, the ball frozen to that, uh, to the far left diamond, which will leave a person, an incoming person, the opportunity to play the uh, five. To, 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 play a, to play a safety or pass it back. I think he'd be pushing actually out of here to a safety yeah. and taking a one point foul. But no, 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 he's got his cue down. I mean, he's looking at maybe trying to make this one ball or, or doing something here. You can see the edge of the 11. I'd, I'd clip the 11 and go back up. Yeah, you can see the oh, 11. Oh, okay. All right. I think his speed's not going to quite get there, though. Yeah, it hit a little chubby, right? It's a little thick. Yeah, from this angle, the 5 looks like it, it might go. Uh, or he can, he's got options here. He can shoot the 11 and, and stun it forward here for the 15 and try to get an opening. Play the 11, whatever this ball is in the corner. That might be the 13 ball. I think the 15 fiber in the right corner. Yeah. That's the 9 ball in, in the bottom corner. So probably 11 to the 9. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Hit it, kind of stun it forward a little bit and get to the back reel. I know if he draws back, it'd only be for the 1 ball. I think he's just going to move it forward a little bit. Hit a dragging draw to it. All right. Not sure if he got there, but he's got the one in the side if he didn't. Yeah. More rail first on a 15, but then he would have to float up to the side to get to the 5 next. Or he can shoot shoot the 15 and get to the 1. I think the 1 ball would be a good shot here. Yeah, I'll play the 5 next. Come back out for that 15 ball. That's kind of wide. He might actually go one rail to the rack here. Not a good call. Um, I think the 15 was a little wide. Was it the 15 or the 12? I couldn't see the angle here. 15, yeah, you're right. All right. Well, he's pushed a, the purple ball, the 12, and actually the 10 into possibly break areas, too. The 15's a little high, but that, that can happen, too, so... 
here he's got I think he's got some problems here. Um, he's got quite a few. He's got the nine ball, and he can play position on the 10 or, or the 15, like you said. The 15 opens up that little cluster underneath. So I might use the 15 to go into those those three balls, the two, the three, and whatever that ball is underneath that. Um, and that's what he just looked at. So I think he's playing nine, playing uh, position on the 15 to open those up. Yeah, I think he's going to have to shoot the nine and get, get, get that seven ball out there so he can get to the eight and four. He hit this pretty hard, so he's gonna yeah. he's gonna go into something here, but um, that's kind of he's a little thin. So probably the fourteen. Maybe the fourteen time. goes here. I don't think I wouldn't shoot this fifteen ball. I would shoot that that green that, that fourteen. Yeah, you can play the fourteen, play position in the six, and then go into those two clusters here. The eight, four, or the three balls on the bottom. Looks like the seven, the two, and maybe that's a twelve ball or eleven ball. It looks a little high. It'd be nice to be able to shoot the 14 and, and bump the three up, but he might shoot the 14 and get to that, that eight and four. Okay. Um, now he's going to use 15 to open those clusters. The problem with this, he's got no ball sitting on the back rail, and uh, if he goes into these, um, hopefully the, for him the two ball will come down along with the 13. He definitely doesn't have uh, any insurance except for what he bumps into a, an area here. Possibly the six ball. Yeah, He's got the two. I was thinking, but he did get the two, yeah. Now, I believe the eight and the four goes, or at least the eight goes. So if he can play the two and uh, somehow attain position on this eight, he can play that in the lower right corner and then get rid of the four. Well, he also can go from the two and get, and get up. Uh, just short of the side pocket and spin on that touch of ball and get to the six and get back down to the seven and the ball on the bottom rail. Well, this is, this is to watch bumping balls. I don't know if, uh, yeah, I think he got himself. Yeah. I thought for sure he'd come one rail out and, and come up and not bump anything. He finally got rid of his clusters and then he, then he bumped into a ball. So we're obviously going to see a safety here and uh, Michael, what do you? Th how do you think he's going to do it? You think he's going to thin a ball and leave him distance? I think he's going to put him in the upper right corner as we're looking at the screen. He's going to thin the ten, try to block the ten and the three, put the cue ball in the upper right corner. As long as that eight four is not dead, if the eight four is wired, then this is a bad shot. Right, he's got to make sure that eight four isn't wired. Well, he hit it good enough where it torsion can't make the seven. This is good speed right here. That is good speed. I think you're right. Um, I think the first thing that Torson's going to look at is this four ball. Either the 8-4 combination or the 12-8-4. Well, you know he, he couldn't have left that if that's wired. I think going into him straight is the, is the angle he'd want to do. Now, if he does shoot that the 8-4 directly, he's got to be a little careful of that 7. I, I don't think he can scratch, but it's always in a thought. Because I don't think he'll be hitting this with any major speed. He's definitely looking at it, so it, it either goes or, or he's got a tough shot. I'd take a foul. I'd take a back scratch here if, he, if it doesn't go. Well, if he takes a scratch, he's not going to go far with the cue ball. If he takes a scratch, he'll hit the ball about where his where the chalk is on the table, right about foot to the side of the cue ball. Tempt him with the six. Absolutely. Yeah, he's going for it. So either the twelve eight four is on or the eight four is on. Oh, it wasn't on. He's going to be annoyed with that result. So Mario's got a shot in the 12. So a good safety by Mario. Yeah, that did turn out good. And he's got the position on the seven after he pots, pockets the 12. Pretty natural. He's got, like you said, the 10 or the six as break shots. Well, I think what he needs to do is avoid, uh, if he pockets his ball, avoid him putting anything else. Yes. Ooh, he jumped out of his skin. This could be costly. 
Now, Mike, when you spent your time walking around here, did you, um, these pockets look like they're f the four and a half inch or four and three eighths? They're not four and an eighth though, right? Uh, no, I think they're four and a half. Okay. It's also a little humid in here, so they're drying a little bit. Yeah, I'm at the table to play a little wet. There's a lot of people in here right now. Yeah, Thorsten might use the, uh, he might push the three up now for a better key ball. I think he might push the 10, actually, just slightly, because it's, it's a little low and funny. If he can oh, hit, it with, with he hit it with soft speed. I like the 10 as a break ball. Yeah, he's going to use the three last, so it looks yeah, like, no, uh, I, I'd like six, a six, four, eight, thirteen, three, ten yeah. ball. Yep, and then three in the side and stop. That's yeah. right. Or whatever that stripe is at the bottom. So four, eight stripe, the seven, ten ball break shot. Well, I can tell you by what I've seen and all the years I've seen Thorsten, when he's moving around the table, the numbers go up quick. This is just as good. Just get rid of the bottom two balls. Notice he checked his angle to make sure he gets to the right side of the seven so he can just float yeah. up a little bit. And so he's just below it, yeah. And you want to roll this about almost parallel to it. Yeah, a foot. So looks uh, good to me. Foot. Yeah. I guess he can reach that fine. Well, they split the rack, so it should be 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, but then uh, we didn't have no intentional fouls. That's <laughs> took an intention. Okay. Which was surprising to me, really. Well, what I've seen over the years, I've never seen a person hit a rack harder than he does shooting. Now, do you use outside English on this? Draw outside well, some people some people will just use inside and just break the balls and try to try to get five or six balls and find some on the back rail. No, he's he's, he's going to draw this and try to get to the center of the table. A low outside. Yeah. And uh, it looks like he only has one ball to shoot, which is the three. Or no, it's the five, actually. Yeah, but it's a very good shot to shoot. You can be able to get under the stack in the next shot. Well, yeah, I mean, if he can get to the five and and he can roll forward enough that he can spin this ball with some inside, he can shoot the 14 and and uh, they start to try to get a break shot right now. He's going to hit this with a slow drag inside. Right English. Oh, he came back out. I'm not so sure about that. Came out too far. He's playing for the 11, and uh, I think the three got in the way. Yeah, that ball did come off the rail pretty good. Is the four uh, dead? You know, um... Now that you said that, uh, it does look pretty close. The problem is the two is uh, on the most part of the seven. That two is owning a lot of property on that seven. This is very close from my angle. I mean, what else does he have? Only other shot he has the 12, I think, right? The one ball is asking a lot here. See, yeah, he's, he's playing the four. He's playing, yes. Oh, and he slaughtered it. I think if he had hit that a little softer, it would have gone. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. He he hit the ball at the pocket. It was slower, would have gone in. He hit the ball so hard, it, it compressed the cushion. You know what? He probably did that so it wouldn't throw. So maybe he would have thrown out had he hit it softer. You know what I'm saying? He was probably trying to cut the ball. Well, the ball hit to the, to the inside of the pocket. Um, so maybe he was just trying to force the angle. Well, I can tell you one thing. Right off the gate, the the uh, 11 and 12 balls are in uh, in good position. 11 is a break shot. There's a break shot and a 12 leading to it. But uh, with balls up table, um, he could very well go 14 to 12 here at the end of the rack. You know, I might address those right away. Well, I always like to play half tables as quick as I can. Uh, so I like to get them out. But these balls are so wide open right now. He's going to have to address this four ball soon, too. And that ball he just put to the rail in a bad spot. Uh, I might have left the ball by the first time as a key ball, and now he's going to have to use that to get position on the other ball that's uh, on well, the side right Well, this is right even now. making the story more for going to the rack at the end now because um, because that 13 ball is in a unique position. I, I, think he, I really think what he should try to figure out here, uh, where is the eight ball? go so he really needs to get rid of this purple ball the four ball. 
Yeah, and then he can fall between and get the two balls off the bottom reel. I think he's going to go four and then 15 and get with that 13 out soon. But he's uh, he's opting to play the three ball, go up table and get rid of the two 14. Well, one thing for sure, does the 14 even four, 14 past the two ball? There's another thought. Right, right. But he can get all the way down to the two if it doesn't. Make an angle. Yeah, I really like shooting this 14 ball here. I mean, the other option would be shooting the 15 and just getting to the 13 now, and then you got your side there. But yeah, I like the problem is that you gotta make a you gotta make a pocket for every ball if you can. And right now, the eight really just doesn't have much of a pocket. That's right. Four. Yeah, I like this. The six leads to the eight once he gets rid of this four, so that's that solves one problem. And the 15 leads to the 13, which solves another problem. And then the last problem is just a 214. Well, you're trying to think as much ahead as you can. So, I mean, uh, he might go after the six now, possibly, um, and get rid of the that side over there. Because I think he shot that four ball. I think he went a little farther than he wanted to. So now, um, see, I would have liked to live the, the eight to lead to the three and then, and then go for the three up table. But uh, everybody's got their... You, you can never see every angle from the side or right, from, the from our monitors. The good thing about the eight is it does bring you back down table after you get rid of the 14 and the two. So well, He's going to go one, and then where's he going here? Back to the six? 15, 13, I think. No. I would get rid of that 15, 13. He's, he's going might, up he table. Might go, yes, he might go up table here. I'm wondering if the 14 passes by. Evidently, uh, evidently uh, it might... Unusual pattern here. Yeah, see, uh, I would have kept this eight to get me back down table after I took care of the 14 2. So he might be using the 14 2 for last, like you said, you know, to get on this on this break shot. Well, I mean, what ideal shot here would be I would shoot the 15 and go into the side rail right above the 13 ball. Above the 13 and tap the 12 toward the side. Because then he could have gone 3, 12, uh, 11 at the end. But now he's, uh, I yeah. don't really know what he's going to do. I, I, mean, I mean, I guess he's going to shoot the 13 and and then find the, an angle for the 3. Yeah, to I go mean, up table. I mean, I don't know if there is up table from here. I mean, he might shoot the 12 now. He's straight in. The problem is that that, that 13 ball is in a unique position here. I mean, you're going to go 13, 12. Now he's going 13-3, getting angle on the three in the side to go up table for the two fourteen. The problem here is if he if he doesn't fall perfect here, well he's he's gonna be okay. He might carry to the whole back rail here to the twelve for the two, like you said, then go to the fourteen. I like that. I think that's a little safer. If the fourteen goes, he'll use the short rail anyway to go go uh, to play uh, speed control. Ooh, three rail down. He's all right. He's thick enough where he can draw out or just uh, play short side position on the 14, whatever he wants here. Well, he did stick with your uh, 12 key ball pattern. Just a little bit of a different route to get Well, there. I had thought he would take care of the, the up table balls at the end and come down to a 12. But the main thing is he can even fall straight or almost an angle. The only thing he doesn't want to do is have the cue ball. But it's too, a little too bit thin. far here. I mean, you don't want to travel too far or to the right of the 12. This isn't that easy to kill this ball. These balls are sticky, so I think you can hit this thick and twist it in. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's a little wet, so I think you can twist it in. I'm definitely going to hit this with some drag low left. Yeah, yeah, he's able to hold it. Nice shot. Ooh, that is a good shot. Very well done. He's got to get credit. Uh, so it should be torsing it to that rack. So 12 and 2. So that would be uh, 19 to, to 9. Is that right? I believe that's what the score is, yeah.
just a hair thicker than a half ball hit here. If he uses outside English, he might just aim at a half ball hit. Yeah, it should go into the second, third balls and go to the back rail. Yeah. He's really late into that. He's going to want that eight or something to dress yes. up because he's in a little bit of a... No, I don't think the one ball goes on the side. It's a little low. Ah, this is tough. He might be shooting at the, at the five ball here, possibly. Unless he can, unless he can shoot the eight ball and uh, just roll forward. I don't think so. It looks like the eight's a, a little scary to me. Yeah, me too. That's what it does look like. He looks like he's scoping it out. Now he's playing the five. Okay. At the right side of this four ball, what's going to happen? I know he hit it clean. Yeah, he just focused on pocketing the ball, and that's all he could do there. I might play one three. Come back for the eight. Get underneath the stack with the eight. You know what I mean? Play the one and the three ball. Come underneath the eight. Not playing play much. Play down table. Might not, not, not playing much straight pool. I think there's a possibility that uh, he might shoot this one ball. If he does shoot the one, he might think about going to the back round now and leaving that three ball. Unless he feels he can shoot the three and draw back down the table. There's something here. Uh, I guess he's going to go to the eight ball, like you said. So he left this three up table. Most of your straight pool players would have got rid of that ball. Now, I don't like the 7-6. I like using the 8 to get underneath playing position on the 2 or the 4. the eight ball is insurance here. I don't know. I mean, shooting this combo, he's not going to get any movement with anything. I couldn't, I couldn't shoot this combo here. It's, it's no. a foot away. But I mean, he might break out a few of them stripes and loosen them up just a little bit, but he's going to get stuck. Yeah, see, so he can get stuck. He had so many good shots underneath the open that stack up with insurance. I'm and he actually made the, the balls lay worse here. And he's got no break shot. Where he had, he had one before. Yeah, maybe the uh, combination on the 14 to the 4 is good, where you can play the 8 and then play the combination. Yeah, it looks like a uh, 9, 14, 4 might, might be wired. Yeah, I think that's what he's playing. Either that or he'll play the 7 into the 4 and go into him. Is that the 7 on the bottom? Yeah, 7, 4. Yeah, see, I would have liked to come. Let's see, I maybe mean, get the 13 out there a little bit. Oh. Well, um, the only ball in the break area right now is a cue ball. What he'd like to do is get an angle to make the, to make the nine and push the twelve into a break area. I might hold that thirteen as a break shot um, underneath the stack. Well, he also might shoot the fifteen here off the fourteen on the side and maybe try to move these balls to the twelve. I mean, just right now, I'm he, his patterns are so a little bit unorthodox, so he's just uh, going with it. Yeah, I see, I see two. Sorry. Three potential break shots. Uh, either the two ball, the 13 ball, or the 14 on the side. And of those three, I like the 13 ball with, with uh, well, I mean, the three to the 14 is not bad, but he, he's probably going to have to move that with this ball he's playing in the side right now. Yeah, I thought maybe he might shoot the 15 and tap into the 12 here. Yeah, I wouldn't have moved that 14. Well, it's, that's, that was the last thing I would have done is move the 14. Yeah, he probably didn't intend to do that. Well, now he's got to shoot the, the 13 and uh, and bounce out and, and get an angle to shoot the 9 eventually and try to push the 12 over. He's playing the combo. Okay. Well. So I use draw on this so the 12 has follow on it and goes forward. All right. Well. And uh, he may have a shot in the 3, which would be very f fortuitous. I think he's going to have to go into the rail here. Yeah, that worked out, I think. I'm not sure it did. If it didn't, he's in big trouble. Yes, he's in big trouble. Yeah, he's got it. 
He, he won't shoot it unless it's there. I think he's gonna squeeze rail first with a little bit of a little bit of bottom. It might it could clip the 14 going in. Yeah, what he does want to do here, if this ball goes, it goes softly. He doesn't want to hit it too hard. Well, he's, got the, he's got the seven ball. Yeah. Back down table. Yeah, wow. He doesn't want to hit it too hard. Well, um, that was the best shot of the match so far. Wow. <laughs> that was scary. Uh, you know, like, uh, I think he has used that 13 as the break shot now. So, if he can pocket this 7, maybe 7, 14, 12, or 12, 7, 14, 2. I like the 2 as the key ball to the 13, if I got a choice. He might use the 7. He can go 2, the other stripe ball underneath, and then the 7. That'll, that'll be just as good. Probably better, actually. Well, this is uh, a little weak. He's got. He might have to go up near the center of the table here, but a side pocket. As such. Yeah, he just wants a stop shot on this seven. He won't be too close to the rail. Well, I think we're going to do it. Yeah, exactly. Just punch it off the rail. Make sure uh, it looks like he can have this angle. He don't even have to go into the rail. Might want to draw this cue ball back about two inches. Well, from this angle, uh, these balls are going to explode. Yeah, he's underneath. He'll, he'll use top outside or top left in this case. Yeah, I think he'll use top left. He'll use top right. There's no reason to use right because he, because he's not in the center of the rack. He can uh, force these out with some left and hit the rack and again try to come out toward the center of the table. And he'll probably have six or seven balls loose at a minimum from this angle. I actually hit this a little softer, uh, Bobby. <clears throat> just use a little bit of outside and just get a couple balls out, and then I usually have a secondary break shot, but. Well, the thing about it is this cue ball is going to hit the six you know, ball, I think. Uh, yeah, it's going to hit the six, but it's, it's, it could get a piece of the fi little bit of the 15. I think he better put a little more on it here, and uh, otherwise he's not going to have any movement on the cue ball. He's going to be below the rack. So I think he used high left to try to get to the center somehow. Yeah, um, he, he hit it with some pace, like you said. Wow, he, he's not afraid to hit the rack, that's for sure. You know, sometimes on that shot you can scratch in the side too. Uh, you know the side he's by. Sometimes he'll go right cross corner in the side. That's why I like to hit it a little softer myself. Yeah, I wouldn't hit it that. I agree. I wouldn't hit it that hard for sure. I get rid of this two, three, and four right now since I'm on him. You know, get rid of that little group. Come back up table maybe with the the one or the ten. Yeah, like his first four shots are going to be or five shots will be all solid. Uh, colored balls. So yeah, it could have going one to the eight here too. Now, what do you use to go into the stack here, Bobby? Well, I mean, the problem that he has, he don't have a he don't have a break shot right now. So he's got to be looking at. I don't know if the five would go, um, or he can fall below uh, somehow and get an angle to the six, and then play the five back on the side, and then push the and then push the seven ball into a break area. So that's what he should be looking at doing. In order to do that, he's got to get rid of this eight ball. So he's going to have to go from the three. I think he's going to go three, one, eight. That's the pattern that I would do. See, I would use the one to get underneath right now and play position on the 14 off the 15. So I would go one, 15, 14, open him up with the well, 14. If the five goes past the eight. Um, no, no, I see what you're saying. That's a good, then, that's a good break shot can, as well. Yeah, then he can just roll it forward. I mean, the quicker he can get to that, that would be great because uh, if he got stuck on the 11 ball trying to push the 7, where's, what ball would he have to get out of the rack? Well, it sounds like with what you're talking, he'd have the 6, right? You're going to preserve the 6. You're going to play the 1, 8, and then the 4. Well, I mean, again, with his unorthodox patterns, we don't really know. He could end up leaving the I care about it and leave the 6 for the whole rack. But the problem is right now he's also got to get rid of this 14 ball because the 12 doesn't have a hole unless he's going to get some movement somehow. Yeah, see, I play, I play for the 14 right now and use that to go into him. Well, if he plays for the 14 and gets back around, he can right now he can go 15, 14, and then, uh, then he can come back around and shoot the 12 and then push, um, push the 7 into a break area. But the problem is shooting the 14 right now, that's a hard way to spin. He might have to go from 14, 6, 12 here too. I 
pretty sure that 12 does not pass the 14 right now. Correct, yeah, I believe you're right. He looks like he might come up for this eight now and then use that uh, four ball or five ball in the, in the rack to open the rest of them up. Yeah, I wasn't sure that the five ball went in the corner. Um, in the lower right? Yeah, but it does look like it's, a, it's slightly above the 11, so he can get a whole ball in there to try to twist it with some bottom right and get in. If he does that, then he's got a good chance of also getting that seven ball from the angle over, but it's not going to – he does – it's the problem from the angle, he could end up getting the seven and putting it on the rail. So it looks like he might go in – go from the five to the 12. Now doing it this way, he better make sure that he gets a shot on the uh, – it looks like the nine ball or the eight ball after he pushes the 12 into these balls. But he's definitely going to have to push. He's got to get an angle. I don't see any way, Michael. He's got to get an angle for the, from the five to the 12. Yeah, I don't like to this. Try to, to try to push this 12 ball. So I would have played the eight, got a little above the five there, and drew off the stack and just knocked him out and played position on the 10. He's got enough here that he can push the seven ball over about three or four inches. Just as so. That, you know, that's actually done pretty good. That was done very well. He's got the eight ball now. No, no. Uh, I think he's going to take the 11 now. Yeah, but, I mean, he, he preserved the eight just in yeah, case. Yeah. He, you know, so he did have insurance the way he went. So I, I like the pattern he chose. If he shot this eight ball and, uh, and drew back, I'd be surprised. But he might shoot the eight ball and go from the 10 to the uh, 11. 11 to 9. But, then, but if you do that, you're going to end up having to come two rails back out, use the bottom rail and the side rail to get position. Less movement, the better. I mean, I... I Maybe Whatever. he's not confident with the 11, or maybe it's partially blocked thinking. by the 9. Yeah, sure, that's what I was thinking. The 11 and 9 are both good key balls to get on the 7. There's a lot of ways to work with balls in the stack to get to the 7. So I might go ahead and bow out and play the 8 to the 10, get on this 11 or 9. He's drawn, though. That's the yeah, this is... He's going to have a lot of movement that, here. That was not what I would have done. He might have gone. He might. I don't think he'd go 11. I, at this point, I'm not sure what he's doing. But I wouldn't think he'd be going 11, 10, and then shooting the 9 and going going up and down for the 7. But maybe. I, I might even play short side on the 10 here with where he got, which is crazy. But He's actually shooting a 9 now. Yeah, he's drawing for the 11. So the 11 to the 7 is a lot of cue ball movement. He's got to get really good on this 10 to get proper shape on the break shot. From this angle, he might even shoot a 10. He could possibly shoot Update a 10. Up, yeah. yeah. And you never want to shoot balls past the side pocket, especially after the, at the end of the rack. Mm, he's going to throw this ball out. Really? Well, there's his uh, nine ball stroke. We know he had that. And landed perfect on the 10, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, he's going to have to bounce this a little bit, I think, off the rail. Um, he could just kill it there, but I think he's going to bounce it, try to get it four or five inches off the rail. Same spot. Yeah, so he could have just stopped it instead yeah. of going after. But, uh, you know, a little, little, little unique patterns, but he's forcing it. You know, the bottom line, he's not missing. Well, he's on a 38-ball run. Right. That's the thing with some of these players. They play very different patterns than, than standard straight pull patterns, but uh, they don't miss, so they get out. So this is just all ball, ball pocketing. I would use follow here. I wouldn't use draw. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt. If you use draw, then you're gonna, you can have a skid, too. There's no reason that that ball is easily four or five inches uh, on the other side of it. I mean, you just got to go into the uh, 13 and 14. Don't really have to do much here, but the cue ball will hit the back rail and come back out where the cue ball's at now. Oh, yeah. that, now that. Now he had such a nice angle. That. I would not have which, expected that. Which is amazing that uh, a couple of racks before that, he had actually blasted the rack, and the one that he really could have hit real good, he hit it easy. Well, I don't see anything. I think this is going to put it into his 39 ball run. Right, there's nothing dead here. And does uh, Thorson on a foul? He's not, right? No, I don't think anybody's foul. Yeah, so he's in a bad spot here. So what I do here is I, I try to trap my opponent by rolling up on this uh, stripe and then using it to, to clip off of and go back into the stack, hoping that my opponent doesn't 
do too much with the cue. You know, you leave yourself parallel with the strike, then you can thin it and come back into the snack and, and bury the cue ball back where it is. Well, I mean, he can, I mean, the other thing too, he can shoot the 13 and, uh, and thin it. And from this angle here, unless he left the four on the side, he can shoot the 13. And come where he's putting his cue. And, and just put it, no, actually just leave it down in the corner a little bit. Thorson doesn't have an angle in any ball unless the four balls pops out. Yeah, I see what you're saying, but I think he's going to try to get to the first diamond. A little bit of little, little bit of left. I think he's a foul. Well, the problem with this yeah, is, this is two ball table. Very and dangerous. And he did, yeah. So I, I like leaving the ball down here in the corner. Uh, as long as he didn't leave a shot in the four ball, he was able to force Torsen to play safe. Okay, so that was a run of uh, how many did he get there? He had seven. Single, I think forty. He made the break shot. Forty one, yeah. Forty one. That's a nice run. Yeah, I believe Thorsten has either the, the stripe straight up in the corner or the two in the side. Yeah, he's got the stripe the stripe straight up in the corner. Playing the thirteen. See his mechanics, see if he stays straight. He did. Great shot. He's got the 12 now. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. If uh, he gets into this racket, then uh, he's got a little room to make up for it. It's going to be pretty good. Oh, he's got the 9, better yet. 9 4. Okay, then, he, then uh, I'm not sure if he's going to use this 12 ball. He, he hates to move the 12 because it's sort of in the break here right now. But you know what I do here? I play the 4, and I play position on the 11. I use the 11 to go into the stack. I got the 1, I got the 12. It's possible insurance. I like that a lot. A little safe. Yeah, I mean, there's so much that would that he would not end up be hard not to do a shot. I like shooting the four and just barely rolling it, and then just use the twelve and run it into the five and six. Oh, he's using the twelve ball. Yeah, I like just running this ball. It don't have to be hard because that way he has a chance of pushing the the ten or something over into a break area like so. No, be careful. well scratched. Wow. If this five doesn't go, he's got a problem. And if he the five don't go, he's gonna be forced with a tough shot on the eleven ball. Yeah, that was a little bit of a I think decision error. I would have used a stun shot instead of a a draw stroke on that. I think he, he drew that he a little was more. Fortunate that he didn't scratch also, I think. Yeah, he was annoyed with how he hit it. I think he has to play the eleven. Yeah, I don't think that the five goes by. I think you're right. I think he's going to have to thin this 11 ball. I mean, I don't think he'll be using any inside English or anything, but the key thing that he has to do is make sure he gets another shot. So when he comes back and forth across, he's actually going to probably have to use his break shot. Uh, unless he can get, get all the way over for the two ball. I don't see that happening. He'd, he'd have to come underneath the 10. That's wow, what a he, shot. He did hit inside English. What a shot. Yeah, that was terrific. That back in line. Well, he can shoot the one ball and then shoot the eight and get on top of the 15 and two, just leave the three ball down there for the end of the rack. If the but six the goes, he can knock that five out. The problem he has, though, I think he's going to have to go 14, 14 to 10 at the end of the rack because the 14 is still off table. Um, so he, I guess he's going to shoot the eight and then the, then the two and the 15 and the six and the five and three, I guess, and he can shoot to go from the 14 to the 10. You notice a lot of times he's going to push that ball out with the 15. If and it's amazing how many times at the end of the rack, if you don't have a stop shot for a ball on the side or something, it seems like your key ball is always going two rails for your for your break ball. Yeah, good shot. Now he's got that 12 or whatever it is in the side or the two. Yeah, I mean, uh, do you think he's going to leave the five now since it's at just half a ball below the spot or instead of shooting a 10, which looks like it's just slightly above the spot? I mean, I'd like to shoot the five somehow. Nah, he's going to leave the five for his, for his break shot. Yeah, well that's for sure now. Yeah. Now, the, the bad thing about this is exactly what you said, that 14 ball is still lingering up there, and it's not addressed. So I think he might address it right now. 
Nope. 2-6-3, I guess. He's using the 14 as his key. Yeah, and he's going to get an angle to the 3, and he's going to have to some type of bottom where he's going to end up having to come to the 14. Well, he's a little thick on this ball, so he's going to lose use a low outside on this or low right. Yeah, I think. that's what I'm thinking, too. A, a two rails, some bottom angles uh, come short of the side part here and just don't fall, don't fall straight on oh, He's there. using follow. Okay, he's got better angle than we think. He's going forward. He's going one the side pocket. Okay. Well, I think he's finally loosened up. He's letting his stroke out. I'm pretty certain he won't use follow here. Here he'll use some sort of stun draw. Unless he's got a better angle than I thought I again. He's going to leave an angle to barely cut the five. Yeah. Well, I can tell you one thing. Wow, he landed dead perfect, so I was totally wrong there. He probably used straight top, no inside, though. This ball looks like it's going to go into the, to the front ball heavy on the bottom side of it. This could be his patented draw stroke that he's that he's uh, done so many times. I'd like that where that ball is a little higher just to clip him and then uh, send the cue ball one around back out to the center so there's no danger. That, uh, yeah, if he's in the top two balls of the rack, um, he doesn't really need to do much, though. It'll open well. If he's getting more and towards the eight, then he'll probably do the draw stroke like you're saying. But if he's going into that top well, corner ball, it's going a lot to, of good can happen. going into the bottom part of the 15, it looks like. I mean, uh, he's either going to hit these real easy or he's going to smash them. I don't think it'll be anything in between. I, th I think he's going to smash this. Yeah, good read on that. I'm going to tell you one thing. Uh, ball didn't roll off. <laughs> There's no chance of the ball and the tail being on a level here. And, and it would have mattered. Um, by the way, these tables are, look like they're all in great condition as I walked around and took a look at everything. You know, instead of playing this two jacked up over the seven, I might, might play the four ball, get rid of that six, and then come back down the table. No, yeah, four so close to the side. I mean, I thought about that too, but I think uh, I think the two ball has to be the shot here. The, the thing about it is just going to be careful on what to do next. I mean, he's going to hit this ball. With okay, he's not jacked up. I thought he was jacked up. He's going to have to hit this ball some left angles and try to get away from the rack a little bit. The cluster of balls in the center. He might actually go up and play the 15 ball next if he's going to touch him, unless he touches the ball here. Yeah, I don't really think he wanted to hit a ball there. And the fact of the matter is he still might even have to play the 15 ball. Be a good time for him to go up the table and grab the six ball after this. What do you think? Yeah, I like that. He can either go to the right side, play short side on the six, or play position on the four and then get rid of the six. I think you just roll it flat down to it. He don't even have to go into a middle with the cue ball. Yeah, he tried to force the angle. You know, that's the first time I think I've ever seen him lift his head when he shot, shot a ball. I think he was trying to force the 15 down, and I think he should have played position for the four and used the four to get to the six there. Well, that would eliminate it if he had any discomfort in his thoughts. Because the four ball was a meaningless ball. All right, well, uh, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, it's three, six, seven. Mario's got to be ecstatic that Thorsten only has 24 balls after that inning. What's amazing is, as hard as he hit that rack, he only made one more ball after that rack. He made a mistake really early when he went into that. When he shot the two and went into the, that one ball, and I think your your thought process with the four shooting that would have been a better idea. Uh, he, he he really certainly wasn't comfortable when he was slightly over that seven. He could hit a little left, but he didn't have the whole ball to, to aim at. Well, the position Mario's in, he could have preserved the seven and used the four to get to the seven, but the four is high of the side, so it's not a good key ball. So I would have just gotten rid of the four there. You know, it's, it's the, the four ball's really not a great key ball, so why didn't he take the six, get to the four, and use that to get to the seven? Well, the thing about it is he has to get rid of the, the nine and three somehow here to make openings for the uh, for a couple balls. You know, I mean, the ten ball also is is not really that great for a break ball. I mean, he's still got some work here to do. Yeah, if he gets the writing on the 13, he can go in him off that, but he didn't. You know, that would have been a good play. Well, you know, here is a little, little dangerous. He can he can try to force us over or play the one or just roll down for the 14. He's got three choices. Yeah, I like this choice. Well, with this choice here, then, then maybe he should try to find an angle to get to the nine. And uh, 
if he doesn't get the angle, then he can have the seven as the backup. But he seems like he was preserving the seven for, for some reason. Yeah, he's looking at the 11 as his, as his uh, secondary break shot here. Now what he could do is he could play this stripe up table, play position on the one, use the one, get rid of the one, and then pretty much all the balls go. That's possible. I don't think he should really shoot any balls past the side pocket in this part of the rack. Um, right now he should try to get to that nine. Yeah, he's going into it, which is a little risky. He, well, you know. Well, I'll tell you what, he pushed a couple more balls in the break here. He's, uh, he's only got to come with one shot in the beginning, and right now I think he, he's got a couple options here, but I think the option really, if he shot the seven from the angle, he hit the three. I think the shot really is to shoot the three ball and come around. Uh, the nine come around the nine, yeah. If he falls short, he has the eight or the 12. I don't think he should shoot this three ball. And he could also play this stripe. Does he have the nine now? Oh, he's... Sure looks like it by the way he's stroking. Oh, okay. So maybe 12-1 for the last two balls. Twelve one break shot. He still has a lot of options, but he could use that at the end. Well, if he's playing this eleven, I try to get to this eight ball. Yeah, I like this. Get rid of this problem ball. Yeah, you get a one half of the table only then. Um, which he had that, but then he went to the back of the rack and knocked us on table. So still some decisions here to make. I mean. Um, the very simple thing here would just shoot the eight and bump out and shoot and get down to the three next. But if, I, if the I, one I goes, I might draw and try to get underneath the one. Go eight, one, three, seven, twelve, uh, then break shot. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think he's I think he's thick enough on this eight he can get underneath the one, so he doesn't have to go into the twelve. Yeah, like that. I like this. Now you can play the one, the three, or the seven, get on that 12 ball, use the 12 ball on the side, land perfect on this break shot. So you're going to leave the 10 then? Yeah, or you could get rid of these these three over here, you know. He's got some options. The three and the seven are both good break shots too, looks like. Yeah. Um. I like the 10 a little better though. Yeah, he does too, it seems. It's a pretty standard pattern. As long as he gets underneath this 12, it'll be fine. Well, the key thing, folks, is at the end of your rack, especially, you want to try to leave uh, things that are in a triangular type of design, a pattern, and such, such. And you see, he's got some type of triangle pattern here, so he end up having some some type of stop shots are barely moving on cue balls at the end of the rack to simplify. So uh, in here, he's going to have to shoot the seven, and he's going to have to take a little bit of a tough shot here to get to the 12 on the side and unless there's something else that I see I didn't see this happening uh, the 12 must go by the 10 then yeah I'm surprised he took the 12 in the corner well he should just be able to draw back here unless he wants to go into the rail I wouldn't go into the rail right. I don't think uh, he got another 12 balls I'm going to get 60 to 24 Could be wrong. I need a score up eight. Well, this is a quarter ball hit. Again, you would expect he would get a good uh, result from this break shot as long as he makes it. Well, the one thing about this is you, let, you can let the cue ball do the work here. You don't want to overhit it because then uh, you're making that ball slide before it comes into the roll. I think the cue ball can do all the work here itself. What he does have to do, be careful of, is with the follow in this ball, is actually if he, hit, if he hits right between these two balls here, there's a possibility this cue ball can come down and bump off the 12 even and scratch. So. And if he draws it straight back, sometimes you draw on the side and get that crazy draw. This is a little funny. I think he should just naturally hit this ball with a, with a 
a couple tips on high right and go from there. Draw would be. It looks like he's, he's, worried, he's worried about scratching. Yeah, I would not have drawn at all. And boy, he had his open. He was wide open and he was scratched too. So there's two balls got to come up plus a scratch. He'll lose one point off that, so the score will go to 59. It'll be 24 to 59. Yeah, he, uh, he overcut that ball quite a bit. Well, the problem with, uh, with the draw, you have to compensate for that. The high English, he didn't have to think of this. Well, I don't want to put it out there, but Torsten needs 101. So I guess I did put it out there. <laughs> My understanding is this is a little bit how the first match went with Tony. He made a couple errors, and then he, he put a, a big number down. Danny, sorry. Notice he's getting all the balls up table now. Probably use the six ball to get back down table. Looks like he's got the four as a possible option as well. Well, the three doesn't go past the five, so he's going to have to fall flat on the back rail here to, to get to that. He might go toward the three now. Yeah. I like what you were saying there because he had the 12s insurance and the 5. Well, you know, he can't play the 10 in the lower corner now unless he gets rid of the 12. So I think he's got to get rid of the 12, fall flat on the 5. That would be what I would do here. Shoot the 12. Get that 5 ball away, make a pocket for a 3. And he might shoot a 3 back from the same pocket he shoots a 12. But it's whatever pattern he's comfortable with. I might play for the 10 in the side here. That opens the pocket for the two and a 15. So I really thought that he would float up and get to play the 10 in the same corner as the 12. Um, but he's got to find a way to get, you know, I have a pocket for a couple of balls right now, but he's got to find a way to get a pocket for a three. But also the nine ball is something to consider too. Because he's going to be leaving the 14, so you might want to get rid of that. There you go, he got rid of the nine. So uh, depending on the angle, he could follow up for the 10. I, yeah. I don't know if he has an angle. Uh, well, plays for the 13 ball or whatever that ball yeah, is. Well, then need. if he does this, then then the situation he has now, he's got to get rid of this five, though. Yeah, he's attacking that now. That's good. So okay, he got so the he play the 15 or the 10 here. Okay, there's the 10. Now he's got a decision. Does he shoot the 10 and draw back for the four? get an angle to get rid of one of these two balls right here because it doesn't look like the 15-2 is a combination. I think he should shoot the 10 and draw and get the cue ball at an angle sort of like where it's at now and then roll forward and get the 15, the 2. Wow. Well, hmm. well, I think he's going to do that, but I think he's going to do it at the end of the back end. Yeah, I think he's going to get rid of this three ball and the stripe and then use the four to get on those two balls in the middle. He came a hair short. He came a hair short. Well, he had the four ball, this key ball to lead to the 14. He might not have to go to that now. Unless he can get back and forth across, it's kind of dangerous. He would just get to that four ball and leave an angle. Yeah, probably go 4, 15, 2. Yeah, then slide over ball. and put yeah. the cue ball a little to the right of where the four ball is at now to shoot the 14 at the end of the rack. Ooh. Oh, he got that to catch? That wasn't catching earlier. The inside English wasn't catching as well. So he'll stay under the two so he can just go to the rail and out. Or stun it across, whichever is fine. I think Looks the like tables are, um, the cushions are going to... The way that they're playing now, with as many people near the table, they're playing wet, so the cushions are going to be bounce, bouncing hard and bouncing short. There it is. Now this is one I, I, when you rack the balls up here, I guess we'll see. But this is one that where I, I just like to go into the top of the rack. Oh, definitely, yeah. 
This is one of my favorite break shots. If, if he's going to the top two balls, there's there's no real worry, and he opens up the whole rack. Yeah, he's sitting pretty good. How would you like to have this break shot for the rest of your life? Um, might, might challenge uh, Schmidt's run. Here's the, the six ball. He's got options. He can try to smash them. I like just going into the six and send the cue ball one rail out to the side and, and get into, getting away from the ball. So he's going for the smash. He's going for the Torsten smash. He went for the smash. Watch out, cue ball. Wow. This is an easier run out. It looks like the five ball might be out. Or the eight ball, maybe. He's got eight, shot. eight and ten both over there. Oh, the ten looks better, but it's a, it's a little high. The five is right in the middle bottom. The four, I don't know. I mean, if he gets rid of two, the six can lead to the four. He's got so many options here. It's, right now, he's just going to peep at this rack apart. You know, years ago, I spent some time talking to Oliver Orton and uh, and he he told me he says it doesn't matter about the balls in the rack just keep running them till the end. Well, I like to be a little more organized than that, but uh, some people just make their way. Sometimes it's nice to determine the what you have for your break balls as early as you can in the rack. Now if he can go into the eight here, uh, I like using a little inside going into the eight and solving that little ten eight problem. Well, he can do that as long as he don't get stuck back on the back side of 10. Right. And that might be the issue with that. Now he, can, he might be able to roll into it. If he rolls into the 810, the 8 will stay there, and he'll be all right as far yes. as maintaining a break shot. No, he's not going to do what we were thinking either. Maybe he's going to do it again from this angle. Or I actually roll the, roll, the, roll the one in, shoot the nine aside, and just draw back on those balls, and you can push them down in a better area, the break area. Because you got both balls to push instead of just one. I don't think he can get the right angle on the, eight, on the nine here. I think he can. Okay. But with hopefully, hitting, hopefully hitting, right. hitting easy. No? Yeah, I didn't. The only other way I see to attack it is with this uh, solid by the stack and clipping the eight and going into the nine, and he'll have the three's insurance. So I would stay underneath well, this we, ball, we, but he's doing something well, else. Ten up table. Ten up table, that's the shot. Nice. Yeah. Now I can play position on the nine, get rid of the nine, then he, he clears can, out the area. He can just stop it stop it where it's at also, four to nine. But then again, for this shot, you're going to have to punch it just slightly. Move the cue ball forward an inch. Uh, I think we've just been informed Shane ran a 125, it looks like. I wonder how we can get some confirmation of that. Did he run 125 and now they said he's going to go for the high run? Well, we know it's more than 92 anyway. This table next to us, Shane Van Boning is playing and... He said he's going to attempt to go for the high run prize fund. So I think what Thorson wanted there was the 7, the 11, the 2, and then the 3 is the key ball. 2, 2 to 3? I like that. Yeah. So I think that's what he's going to play. He wants to get nice and thick on this stripe. Well, he yeah. might have going to the back round coming back up for it. I guess he didn't get the angle you were talking about. Yeah. He just did it on the other rail. Should we? Ah. Uh, he wanted to be straighter on this ball. As good as he controls a cue ball. He, you know, he wouldn't have a problem doing that, but now he's got to... Kill it or come, come across. Yeah, he don't really want to play the three ball on the up table in the corner, so he doesn't want to get to the side or come across. I don't like the cross either. Let's yeah, he's just going to go to the short rail and back up again, I think. Well, he's going to have to hit this ball with a little bit of inside to get to the right side of the eight or parallel to it. Yeah, maybe go two rails. Mm, I think just one. Two's asking a lot. And that ball barely went in. Well, he's got the angle here, though. Wow. Now he's, it's a little past the side. But, you know, when the ball gets pa gets more than a diamond away, 
Uh, he gets past the side pocket. This cue ball could have a lot of energy. I don't. Are we going to see the Torsten smash again? <laughs> I think he's got to hit this with follow. Okay. I don't see the draw shot, shot on this often. I, well, I didn't see it in the last one either, but he sure did it. So. This match is tight, 52 to 59. Oh, he's using draw again. I'm just going to use draw on all my break the, shots from the now The Torsten on. smash. There it is. I think we got a new name, the Torsten smash. Land right on the three. <laughs> How many that times does that happen? Yeah, I'd be stuck to it. This is good. He's got the seven. Play position on the six or anything else. Everything's in the open. Yeah, I mean, he's just got to get he's got to get rid of this 11 ball, and that opens up the rest of it. Um, so he's got the 11, six, and one is the only thing. I would try to get rid of those three balls right there as quick as I could. Looks like he's got the nine, so he'll get rid of the nine underneath the five. Use the five as the break shot, I think. Mm. He's also got this uh, three and fifteen. Nice. Push. Yeah. Wow. He jumped up a little again. He did. I, I thought maybe that pole might pommel. That might have skid on him or something because he he jumped out a little bit. Well, he might want the cue ball cleaned. I think he's getting the cue ball cleaned. At this point, he should he should be able to run this rack out and never 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 hit another ball with the cue ball. He should just be able to hit the object ball he's shooting and never run into another ball. All right, there's Carl. He's uh, going to pick the ball up and wipe it off. Trying to avoid the skid. Maybe have a little, maybe he's concerned about the chalk buildup. Hi, Rich Remsburg, longtime friend. Thank you. Okay, looks like Thorson's going to get rid of that ball that's lingering up table, make it a half table game. I like that. And that makes me believe he's probably going to use this three ball as a key ball to the break shot. Well, <clears throat> that's for sure. So he's going to 1 4 12, I guess, is down there. Unless he's going to pull one of these stripes off the top right now. Yeah, I like that. If he, can, if he can get to it, I think he will, but it might be a little awkward, so I think he's going after the well, one. If he, yeah, he shouldn't. He should. I mean, the key thing is don't run into any more balls if you have to, and I don't see any reason why he has to. So he should be able to run the rest of this rack out clean, but he does have to do something here with that 14 ball. Right. He could play short side off the four right now. Yeah, play the four where he just shot the, uh, what was that, the one ball? Yeah, the 14 so, where he so just shot So shoot this ball one. and just go one or two rails and get the 14 ball. There's the second rail. All right, cleared out. Now every ball's got, got somewhere to go. Yeah, the two might go, or the, the sorry, the ten ball might go on the side. Might play a stop shot and play one of those balls up table. I know you don't like to do that, but uh, I think he could play for the five, too. two rails and get back up, up above the ten. Yeah, I think that's a safer play. Well, that ball took off that rail really hard. I don't think he wanted to go that far. So now he's going to have to shoot the 15-13. Well, he used one of those as a break shot, I think. Does the 10 go by the 5? I think it does. Maybe he's going to leave the 13 for a break shot. But he felt a little funny here. Yeah, he I might bow and use the 5 now. He That's might my have break to, shot. He might, he, well, I don't know. He might have to shoot the 5 now. And come out two rails and put the cue ball similar to where it's at now and then go 3, 10, 13 at the other rack. No, he's he might bump the 5. All right, double crossed us. Stop, stop. Landed perfect. Yeah. I mean, he's going to draw off the three. Yeah, the last nine balls he shot, he really had no reason to go into another ball at all. He was clearly had the balls free. Yeah, he wants to leave himself pretty straight on the street so he can draw towards the middle of the table. He doesn't want to be all the way on the right side like it is now. So he's going to draw back to the middle of the table. Now, nice angle on this break shot. Not too steep. There you go. And, uh... This is a hair high. Um, now this is one you definitely don't want to smash. Um, well, I, I, I use a dead center on this. 
Actually, if he's going straight into the fireball, he actually might hit this with a little force. I like shooting. This is another one I like shooting and just barely hit down and go into the five and go one rail back out and, where to, and leave, put the kill where it's at now. I don't know. Is he, I just didn't see a smash. But in, like I said, he was going to hit that front ball solid, and he did. Yeah, dead center. I don't know if y'all can hear that, how solid he hit that, but he definitely did. Okay, um, so they added up 14 more. Torsten is taking the lead now. Uh, when he started this run, he was on how many was he? Do you remember? I don't. Folks, I'll get y'all an update on the table next to us uh, when we can. Um, Shane and Renel. The yeah, he's going to play the combo here and play the six. Play position on the four. I think he's going to play position on the seven here. Or he can go inside English play position on the five ball. But it looks like he's using draw. Got a little squirrely. the seven. I don't think they updated uh, Shane's score on the other table, but went out or not. Thorsten's playing here. Maybe the 12 is wired. Oh, he can play the 14. Great shot. Watch this on pump. That's really good. I think I played the 7 and try to get position on this 3 ball. Or Does yeah. the 12 go past the 7 ball? Uh, I don't think so. I think the 2's in the way. What would you do here, Michael? I'd play the seven play position for the three ball. Use the three to open him up. But uh, he's also looking at the three in the side. So he could play the four and then the nine, follow down, play the three ball on the side. Then he has the seven as insurance. So four, draw back for the nine, follow up for the three in the side, use the seven ball as insurance. I like that. Yeah, I think a seven ball is the problem right now, though. I mean, he, I mean, They just announced Shane is on a 154 ball run. 154. Yeah, he could also play. Go he might go on them with the, with the yeah, nine. Sure. Yeah, nice shot. We'll look at that nice bump on the 15. Yeah, it's a brilliant play by Thorson. So now he's able to hold the seven and the three. The three is a potential break shot for the next rack, so uh, that was really well played. I think he's got the 15 as a break shot too, so and the 10 ball even. Okay, I think he's taking out the two or the three in the side. I like three and then the two. Yeah, I can push the 15 out a little more if he wants or leave it. Yeah, I like that. Because he has a 10 ball he can turn back to. Oh, he slid between them. Okay. Now he has to shoot the, uh, well, unless he's going 10 to 11 in the side. I don't know if the 11 past the 15 he might just like to shoot the, no, no he's got he's to get rid of this 12 ball. It, it's below the break ball. Yeah, 12, 10, 11, 15 is probably the play. So you think he's going to... Does he have room for the 11 to go past? I don't know if it goes past, but so he's, he's got a couple for the options. side pocket here? Looks like, he's, it looks like he's punching it out to play the 11 in the same pocket. 
Yeah, it goes by the 15 clearly. Or else he wouldn't have played that. So as long as he didn't fall straight here, he's going to be okay. If he fell straight, he's got a problem. Well, you could stop in the rack if he fell straight. Well, that's true too. Yeah, this is going to be the slam. The smash. Thorsten smash. The Thorsten call smash, it. yeah. We got some totals here. It's yeah. good for Halloween, the Thorsten smash. Do a little song. What do you think? Uh, I think we should just use draw, slam it from now on. Is that, is that the move on the break shot? Well, it is for Torsten. I told you from the beginning. Uh, it must work. I mean, the guy's been dominant for two decades. He's definitely doing it on, with, with the way he played the last shot. Well, he's got to do it on He's got to draw this if he can reach it because, because he hits top. He, he's got to roll that ball right into the corner. He's, I don't think he's got these out here. Yeah, it's he's funny when he's when he's going into the middle of the stack. I feel like he's taking a little off, and when he's going into the top or the bottom, he's like powering. It. Well, I think what he's looking at is when he goes between the balls, he takes it off. If he's going into something directly into the break shot where it covers most of the ball, three quarters or more, then he smashes it, or maybe just when he feels like it. I don't know. Tough shot here. He's okay. Good shot. That's very missable. So yeah, he got fortunate the six ball rolled down here. Yeah, the way he's well, he would have had the 10, but that a tough shot. I played the 7 8 before I played the 10, but yeah, he's got the 6, luckily. Well, you know, the 6 ball here, he can shoot the 6, get it for the 13, and just roll into the 14, and then he can take out the 1. It's just a natural here. He can just roll into the 14 unless there's something else. I think I, I played the 14 1 combo. I don't know if he can go into it here, right? Yeah, I think he can. I think he can just roll and just tap the 14 and hit the bottom of it. If he can't hit the bottom of it, he don't hit the top of it for sure. Yeah, I didn't oh. think he could hit it, but he's got other options. Okay, small update. Uh, Michael um, Shane's on a, on the table next to us. He's on a run of 168, going for the high run of the event, which uh, I believe is a $500 bonus, but I'll double check that. I think you want to play position on the eight here. Yeah, I don't, don't think I'd want to shoot the seven. Yeah, I mean, he may have to shoot the five if he didn't get there. It's a shame because he can shoot the eight and push the five into a break, break area, but what would, he, what would he shoot next? Yeah, he didn't get there, so he's got to play the five. Oh, the eight doesn't pass by. Oh, I, I didn't think about that. So the eight nor the seven would go in? I don't think so. I think he's gotten the five. Yeah, he's he's blocked by the seven with the eight. So does he go around the table? Uh, maybe three or more rails. Ooh, careful. Play for the fourteen. Nah. That's a good shot. Yeah, he's got the fourteen. He's alright. Well he's or got the four. Yeah. Well the four would break these balls out. And then he's got a chance from the angle that the 11 ball can push over into a break position. And he he's should have the 8. And he's got the 10 ball at the side for a key ball, possibly. 8 for insurance. I think he's going to try to push the 11. Ooh, ooh. I don't think he wanted to do that. So, we got, I don't know, um, 7 ball could be a break ball. He can shoot 11 and try to push the 3 or a 2 over. Both that's safe. Still got some decisions to make. If he tries to push those balls over, he doesn't necessarily have to have a shot. I might try to play under, get on the two, and push the three out with the eight balls insurance. You know what I'm saying? Well, if he hits, if he can get over on the right side of the table and get under the two. He can push the three out, and he's got the eight as, as insurance. Well, he's got to get an angle to get to the eight to get to that to that two ball that you're talking about to push the three. Yeah, maybe he's the maybe eleven he's to the fourteen. Maybe he's just going to hit this ball easy to get an angle for the eight. No. All right, well, I'm completely confused now. Maybe he's pushing the two into position. That's the only thing he's got left unless he's going to leave the ten ball. Yeah, under the stack. Yeah, there we go. All right, well, that was – he did that on purpose. That's exactly what he's leaving for the end of the rack. So, so at the end of this rack, he's going 14-2. Yeah, so he's got to get rid of this 12. So 8-7, 12 up table, I guess, right? Mm, That's what he's looking at well, is this 12. 12 is he, 
he would have to draw, he would have to draw into it. He'd have to draw into the seven right now from the eight to do that. I right, think can go forward with inside, and then go forward with inside and off the seven. Hmm. I think. Well, he's taking a little time here. He's got to stretch for the ball too. Something to consider. This is this is leaving. Well, here goes the fourteen. Yeah. So he's gonna, you know, he could reconsider this now, where he could end up playing the ten ball for a break shot, but he would have to get way down table. I think he's gonna go fourteen seven here he, and then make a decision. Yeah, let me let, let me uh, shed one possibility. He could use the two to get in the stack, and then take ball in hand in the kitchen, and use the ten balls and break shot. Well, that makes sense because the two ball is so high. Yeah, just uh. He's got to get rid of this 12. If he was going to do that, he'd go 14, 7, 12, and use a two ball to get in the stack. Yeah, just get basically almost straight in. He's not much. He'd be fine. Well, there goes yeah. that idea. No, he's trying to get on this 12. That gives him two ways to get in the stack for the for the 10 ball. I don't know. When he pushed that two ball down there, I think he had the mentality he was going to leave it for a break shot. I agree with you, but when he had to shoot the 14 to clear the pocket for the 12, I think he reconsidered and decided on the 10 ball break shot. But we'll, uh, we'll soon find out. <laughs> yeah, we might be drawing back for the 10 ball now, even. Who knows? Yeah, so he's going to use the 7 to get him, but he's got to get good on the 7. Well, that's the problem. He's got to get real good on the 7. And, and the problem he has now is if he, if he fell straight where he can't force this ball down, he's got a problem. But I think he can force it. But he's got to get that ball level with the third diamond down here. How'd he hit it? Short side in the two. I mean, we'd like to be on the other side of the table, but this will work. I barely rolled this one. You know... Sometimes Thorsten, I feel like, just comes with a shot to make sure he gets to run, and, and he'll bow out of uh, maybe an ideal break shot situation to play something like this. Pretty strong out he had there. Well, I like hitting this ball because it's you got the, the left go, go into the, it looks like the 13 and the 6 with high left and then send the cue ball three rails back out toward the center of the table. Sometimes I get a funny kiss off this. Well, rack out, so if he can shoot the eight, he's on his way. But immediately uh, it sticks out to me, Michael, is is the 10 ball. So maybe eight, 10 possibly? Yeah, 12's in a bad spot too, to be honest. You know, it doesn't go on the side. Um, but yeah, he's gotta clear the sure. 10 to get the 12. Next to us, laughing as he racked his balls uh, for the next rack. He's a 182 ball run. I think Thorson on this table is going to use the one open up the balls, so he'll probably go uh, two yeah. rails around now to get position on the one. Then now uh, the three is insurance. As long as he don't get over to seven. Yeah, he landed pretty sweet there. Yeah, that's that's the right angle because the five can do some work for you here too, and he's got some stuff here at the side to cover for some insurance. Yeah, I don't know but if he's going to get a break shot. What's amazing is you don't see it, but it looks like the 11, 13, 11 is dead on the back into the pocket, too. But it still is. He didn't hit him. What does that angle look like from your angle, Michael, that you can see? I mean, it looks close here. Because if it's real good, he can, he can push something into a break area. He should be looking at that pretty soon, then. Like right now, okay. Now here's the decision: is well, if it's dead, he's gonna push the five out. You know, there's no doubt. Yeah, just don't push it too far. Don't get it above the table spot. He should hit this easy. Yeah, that's yeah, right. a little above the spot. I can play the okay. nine. No, I thought. Mm, no, I think he might stick with the five ball. No, no. I mean, he could shoot the nine now if he wants. Oh. Yeah, he's gotta. I think he's gonna shoot the fourteen. 
and then try to work himself to this 10 ball somehow, somehow, some way. That I like that. I like attacking has to go right away. A little more angle than he wanted, but he's fine. He can use the 4. He can use the 12 to the 7 the last two. So he'll leave the 12 now and use the 7 as a key ball. So 12, 7, 5 will be the last three. I might just try to get a better angle for the 10. What just happened? Well, you know, that's the second time I've seen him do this. Actually, he did it one time and made the ball. He lifted up on his shot again. That ball must have skid. That ball must have skid on him. I, I, I thought for sure he was going to take the 10 there, though. And like then use the 12 to the 7 to the 5 as the last 3, and I, I think he will, will steal that pattern. I'd like to see a replay on that, to be honest with you. It looked like me he lifted up on the shot. Well, still, that's a pretty good run that he had anyway. Mario's got to be aesthetic. Didn't expect him to miss that. And uh, made the 7 a little better, key ball. Looks like 3, 9, 4, 11, 12, 7, 5. Hmm. Well, he has unconventional patterns, so. Maybe he won't do that, but I like I mean, I'd like leaving the 12 and the 7 for the last balls on the rack. Yeah, he's got the 3, natural to 9, 4. Yeah. One rail off got the. Got a small uh, triangle right there at the end of the rack. Well, we can shoot the 12, stop, 7. Almost stop and then five for a break. Basically, essentially, he's going to get rid of these bottom three, get on the 12 ball, and then he should shoot the four now. Yeah, he got a little funny. Looks like he's drawn up. Yeah, this is right. He's really good for here. Yeah, any pattern will work. The key here is just to make sure you're off the rail on the 12. So don't get dead straight. Don't get dead straight. Ooh. <laughs> you didn't jinx him, did you? <laughs> He's still all right because he just floats forward on the 7, but, I mean, there's just no reason to be straight on this ball. Boy, he was dead straight. Maybe a little longer shot and a wider angle to the rack, both. Two things. Yeah, he's got to follow forward a bit. I don't think I'd go to the rail, though. Yeah, I just floated. This is good. This is well, great. Well, if he rolled to the rail, he was going to scratch. <laughs> yeah. One oh one to sixty six. Yeah. I got word that the women's tournament here starts Thursday. That's what somebody was saying. I don't know the times, Michael. I know you may know that. Uh, I'm not aware of the times, sorry. But we have a 16-player women's event, the first ever women's American Straight Bull Championship. I thought it was 14, but maybe it is 16. I'm not sure. 12 land in a bad position again. I think it's four groups of four, but I could be wrong. Round robin tournament. Twelve line in a bad position. I think is the only shot he's got. And then he's gonna have to play then, the nine next. Then what? Then the nine, which will be another tough shot. Semi tough. You better pair down on this. This isn't as easy as it looks. Well, no problem for him, of course. But nine, he's gonna go into the eight, I think. And he should have a shot. Be bad, bad roll if he didn't. Well, he's gonna go into the eight, and then the cue ball's gonna go into the six, and then he's gonna have he's the gonna, seven. He's gonna have the fifteen or the seven, I think. Well, I don't know. If he goes through it, he has the fifteen. If he stays if above, he, he's gonna hit this easy or hard. Easy, I would hope. Well, it did roll down to the back row. Be careful, be careful. If you don't got a combo, he's got the eight ball maybe. I wonder if that's a bad roll or if he should hit that softer. 
you hit it softer, sometimes it skids. Side pocket bridge. I wonder if this two goes or not. I could be wrong, but I think Shane's on 192. Yeah, he's got a side pocket draw, draw shot. Pure draw, this will land perfectly for him. Mm. Go right into the side of the stack. Can we get a clip of that? Oh. This is a tough shot here with, with Mario. He, I'm not sure what he's doing here. All right. Thank you. Shane's on, what was the number, Michael? 192? Yeah. All right. We'll tune back to our other match. We are live for the Torsten match. If he doesn't have a good shot, he could roll up on the 11 and freeze at the Q to the rail. So he, does he have the 8, you think? It's really close. No, he's playing the combo, I think. Ooh. Yeah. Amazing he can't shoot the combo to the 2. He really felt bad. Yeah, I'd roll up on the 11 before I shot this combo. I'd let Thorsten shoot this well, first. I mean, uh, if he shoots the combo and he rolls it, be careful of the side, first of all. And then uh, the 11 might roll out enough to hang toward the rail and have another shot. Wow. Careful of the side. Great shot, though. Yeah, that's really nice. He's got a lot of work here. Yeah, this isn't getting any easier for him. It appears if he could, if he got rid of the combo, he can get an angle to the six and break these balls out a little bit. But the, I don't know, really know. I mean, you know, I think if he cuts the eleven, he's going into this two, this this two ball cluster, mm -hmm. and that could be tr problematic. I don't mean, I he don't doesn't have to get a shot. You think he might shoot the seven, the wider angle? No, I think the eleven takes him to this to this little cluster. But well, he's he's got a difficult part when he's close to the rail like this too. Yeah, I thought he was going in him, and I said he could get in trouble, and that's what he did. What does he have? Nothing. It's 200 for Shane. He's on a 200 ball. Okay. Michael, what what does he have? The six ball looks like it goes, but that's so backwards. Is the three dead off the, f the one? No, that's way high, I think. I think he's looking maybe at the six ball, the four six. But it's so high up. Maybe the four six so, is But what else would he have? Yeah, you called it four six. I mean, you shoot, don't freeze you, you on a ball. You Please shoot don't a tough on shot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just shot like four hero shots, right? If you shoot a tough shot, make sure you get rewarded for it. He really took a chance with a cue ball there. All right, all right, all right. Back in line. Back in line. Yeah, he's now he's got a chance. And if he, this ten ball goes, he'd really get that out of the way here too. Yeah, unless he's gonna shoot a two. If he shoots a two, he's I don't know, he's gonna come back up for a, for something, maybe a fifteen. Or maybe he shoots a fifteen now. Yeah. No, I don't like that. Yeah, I'd shoot the two. So this yeah, so good. No, he's gotta watch hitting the four ball. He got no break shot, tied up. Tied up balls. balls. <laughs> Well, the one ball slightly high. He's got that. The four ball slightly high. He's got that. Set the ball slightly low. The 13 ball. I mean, he can't shoot the 13 and draw back. I mean, I think he should focus on getting rid of this two and then get rid of the 10 or vice versa. I might play for the two to the one or two to the 10, like you said. Two to the one, he's got the one or the four or the seven. He's got if a lot of balls he's playing If he for. shoots one of the blue balls, he has to shoot the, ne the next blue ball either way. Okay, this goes. So I don't think he can break the balls out from here. I mean, is he shooting a seven or a three ten combo? So, well, if he shoot, like I said earlier, if he shot one of the blue balls, he should play position for the next one. Either way, he shot him, and the same thing here too. Okay, just knocked that four 
worse out of position, but he got yeah. the, the 10 which he needed. Yeah, he, 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 the four, is, you know, like you said, he hit it, so that's a no go now. So now he's going to have to float up here and try to, try to get almost straight on the 14. Can he play the 14 the side and push the three out in that position on the, on the I think 10? He's going to try to go two rails on the other side of the one. Yeah, but you see what I'm saying, right? If he played the 14 the side, push the three out, he had uh, four is insurance. He didn't see that. Yeah. And now the problem he has now, he's a little steep. Um, when he, if he shoots the 14, he's got to be careful with a cue ball. He may have to, well, then, now he's going to have to shoot the 14, the three ball to push the 14. I don't think the three goes based on what he just played. Well, then I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to leave the four as a high ball then. That's all he's got. Maybe. maybe. He made a mistake, like you said, when he, earlier when he bumped the four ball. Shane is done with his run, and I don't know what it is, uh, but um, it was over 200. I might play for the four on the side here. He's playing for the four in the corner, but I might go underneath and just play the four in the side. Uh, I like that break shot with where he is. You don't come two rails oh, and come play the four the, ball on the come side. To the first instead. diamond. Yeah, yeah. I think he's going up top. Yeah, he's definitely going up top. But I like, I like that play sometimes in that in that particular area where he was. What was the final run you got there, Bobby? I, I'm trying to get a count from somebody. It was uh, it was two and change. Okay. okay. Uh, being change meaning just over two. And if that was just over two. Um, that's a tremendous run. Diamond table, wet conditions, yeah. pretty strong. Well, that's the big thing isn't so much the table as the conditions, the air. There's so many people in here that the tables are playing wet. The balls are banking a little bit short, about 10 to 15% compensation. Yeah, I feel like Dorsten and Mario's already had two, uh, two kicks, you know, two uh Ooh, two skates. careful here. He's got the 10, I think. Temp play position on the three ball. Get rid of that now. Yeah, you're right. He's got the 10. Then go 10-3. Ten, um, 14 might squeeze by in that cor the other corner. Oh, I don't think I'd shoot that. But if he doesn't like the 10 back cut, he might think about it. And then hit the cue ball into the 10. But if he does that, he's not going to hit the 10 solid. He's going to lose the cue ball maybe a little bit. He's a little square. He doesn't like the 10. You know, he, okay, he's looking at what I said. Temple over for the three. This is a tight little match. You know, both mm -hmm. these guys have had a couple errors. Mario prim primarily uh, positional errors, and, and Thorson a couple of uh, pocketing errors, either that or skids. I can't tell one way or the other. Wow, that ball almost scratched. All right, the announcement was made. Shane Van Boning, they let him continue his run, uh, playing Lee Van Cortez, and he ran 210, which is the record on any of the Maryland, I'm um, sorry, well, it was Maryland originally, American Straight Pool Championships, the highest run before that, was 171 with Niels Fion. I think it could possibly be safe to be the high run of the round for some bonus bonus cash. Bonus cash. Yeah, they were talking 500, I think, or you mentioned 500 earlier. Yeah, and I think that's what it was, yeah. And there are sponsors that donate for certain things like that. So give a shout-out for all the sponsors that you all see on the, on the stream. Help support them. That's what keeps all this going. Yeah, I'm just going to do a quick shout-out to the Traveling Mind Uh Tara helps me a lot with my mental game, so I appreciate her. Playing position on the 11 or the 6, I think. Oh, I came up high. So 14 must go, and he must be able to go into the stack here. Yeah, on the way up here, uh, my good friend Nick Varner called me, uh, and I talked to him on the way up. And um, he's one of the sponsors. I want to give a shout-out to him. And, oh, awesome. Uh, he, was, he wasn't able to participate. Um, He's going to be at the Hall of Fame at the International next week. Yeah, next some some sort of gem in the industry. Super super sweet guy. Yeah, and I think it's uh, does yeah. a lot of coaching with Mark Wilson too. Yeah, I've he got did, he did the WPS with us down in uh, Steinway in Queens. Yeah, yeah, I've got Nick coming into our private facility, uh, Streetlights Billiards Academy. Uh, that we're third. I'm sorry, second, third, and fourth. 
doing clinics. He's on his own doing those, not with anybody else. So hopefully me and him will get a chance to play a challenge match. Um, but I'm not really sure. I have an event that's starting November 1st, and I already have a player scheduled there, so I'm not sure um, I'm going to have much time. But in either case, I'm um, looking forward to having Nick uh, in our area. We always enjoy a lot of time together. We've traveled the United States to many places. I think Such a nice use guy. I six and open this up probably here. Yeah, Nick's a gem for sure. And I know Nick does work with Mark Wilson a lot, but uh, I guess he's doing a private thing with you. Um, yeah, Nick called me and said he had a couple open spots and uh, and he's going to be there for three days uh, doing some clinics and I was hoping to get a challenge match uh, with him uh, for uh, the ledges of pocket billiards but I'm not sure we're going to be able to like I said I've got players in their schedule already but we'll see looks like he's going to have to use the 7 to get on this 14 he's trying yeah. to get on this 14 coming up a little short so well, he's going to go if he 11, gets an angle 14. he can bump the 15 over um, for for a break ball, if you can do what you're talking about. Oh, that was, uh, man. He's got that kind of where he's got to hit a heavy hit on the seven. I think it's a little bit higher than he wants to. He's got to take a little longer shot on that 14. But he's got a chance here. These balls really push pretty good uh, from the 14 going over. He can get a 15 as a break shot. Unless there's something else I, that I'm missing, but that's all I see. Yeah, he's just, uh, he's got to get a little roll here. He doesn't have any, any insurance going in here. He didn't quite get an, as much angle as he would have liked to. But if he goes into this, um, the 13 uh, will hit off the 15 slightly, go toward the side, and whatever else falls with the two solid balls below. Yeah, he's probably looking to get position on the 8 ball. He here. should pounce this just a little bit. Yeah, the 8 ball opened up. And the 15 uh, rolled in front of me. Hit he's a little looking forward. real good now. He's got multiple choices. Um, do you like using the eight, Michael, or, or the two ball here from where the balls are particularly laid out in this bit at the end of the rack here? I personally think I'd use the two. Mm, that's what I'm leaning toward also. But if um, if the eight doesn't go here, he's going to have to shoot the 13 in the side and uh, roll forward. But we have, I doubt he shoot a combo, but we have seen he likes to shoot. Yeah, I think he's playing the combo right now, Boy, which may get him a good break shot. He might be dead straight. That's the only way I'd play this combo is if I was dead straight on it. He's not straight. Oh, you mean the line straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like he just does a stop shot in the eight. Maybe the eight becomes a, a better break ball. Nope. Mm, uh, maybe. Well, maybe. <laughs> we'll see if he looks to play in the two now, then he will be playing the eight. If he does that, he's going to fall dead perfect. He's got a triangle pattern 13, here, yeah, but yeah. he's going to fall dead perfect on that. On that. I mean, um, the safe the safe move, obviously, would be um, to leave the two ball like you had spoke. Um, but the eight ball is, is really not in that bad a spot. You know, I would draw off the eight, play position on 13, come two rails underneath the two is what I would have done. Well, I mean, now he's looking maybe. I mean, he's got different options now. He can shoot the shoot and bump out for the 13 even and have a high a high break shot. But then if he from that angle, no matter where he goes, he's looking at it, he would hit the top left ball of the, t of the top two balls instead of top right. So he should play the eight. There you go. He's going to leave the eight. Good shot. And he hit that well. Hit that very well. He got well. the full rack too, right? Yeah, yeah. Should be very close now. Was it uh, 101 to 94? Oh, 101 to 99, maybe. I don't know. Something like that. Not sure what they had before. Race to 125, right? Yeah. All right. So he's on 31, which would put him into a third rack if he had to try to get out. One is 15. He's really going to go into the 15 here. Yeah, I'd use a stun follow here. Yeah, I like that shot. Now, I wouldn't shoot the side pocket shot because that's a good break shot to open up the rest of those balls. So I would get rid of this ball in the lower right corner, play on the 10, use the 15 to get position on the 11 ball, and then open up the rest. Well, the 4 and 6 is in a weird spot, and the, f and the 4 could lay as a break ball too, but... I don't know how he could ever get to that. So he should clear the bottom rail. 
maybe even taking a chance somehow and going into these balls early in the rack because the other balls are a little ways away. I mean, it's not a bad thing to shoot the 14 and go into the 3-2 the and, and uh, 11 right now either. Yeah, I think that's what he's playing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'll probably take a couple balls off first, but uh, no, I don't see anything really bad that can go wrong. Going, I like going into it right now. It's safe. There's so many extra shots. I don't think he can get in trouble. Well, he got a, he got a couple out, but he, then he created some other angles. Well, now he's going to do what you're talking about. He's got to try to get rid of some balls. Yeah, maybe he can get on this 7, 12 to the 7, or or he could hold the 7 to use it to go on them again. Well, the 11 ball's in a decent spot for a break shot, too, so you got to be careful not to bump too much. And he has the 5 at the side, so 5 and 11 is two good balls for the end of the rack. Yeah, I like that. Probably, I don't think the, the 3, the 13, 3, is that line up toward a hole? It looks a little high, maybe, but I can't really tell. Uh, if I'm looking at the camera angle here, it looks like it's very high. It looks like it goes about half time and up, so I don't uh, think that's on. And they're close together. The three might go in the lower left corner, he though. He might go try to go into him again. Here All we right. go. Uh, he missed it a bit. And look, and he put the six even worse. Well, now he's got some issues. He's got a lot of issues here, but primarily the 4-6. From here, I feel like he's got to play the 9, get position on the 10 to go into those balls after he clears out some of the middle so he has some sort of entrance when he goes into the 4-6. Amazingly, he's got four balls in a break position, possibly five, but the problem is he's got two clusters to deal with. Yeah, he's got to avoid this 11 right here. Good shot. And if he can get the one and go underneath and hit that six, he should have the uh, 10 after. I don't think he can use that much inside, so he's going to have to mm. do something else. He get stuck behind a ball, too, to that. Be careful. He might, he might just shoot the 11 now, but I'm trying to think what he would do next. 11 says break shot. I wouldn't, I wouldn't shoot the 11. I don't know. I think he's got so many balls on the right hand side. I would I thought from the beginning to leave the 5 and 11 for shots but yeah, for the I, end of the rack. But what about the 1 to the 7? And then get rid of the 13 and then use the 2 or something to go into those two balls having the 10 as insurance. Well, it's good because then you open up the pockets for the, for the 2 and 13 completely if you go that route you're talking about. Yeah, 1, 7, and then 13. You can use the three to open them up. You can use the two to open it up. You got the ten as insurance still. He's going to the fifteen ball next. Yeah, he's he just took away his break shot, which means he's kind of got to preserve the three. Right now. Well, I don't know. It's a possibility he may shoot the three next. I don't even really know what he's doing. He might go fifteen three here. He's looking. <laughs> you know what I? Nah, he can't be doing that. I didn't think so either, but I think it's possible though. Unconventional slightly. So so he's playing the fifteen to the three to go into that four six. He's he's prioritizing that four six is a big problem and I, I get that. Yeah, but really he doesn't need to go into the four six. He doesn't need to go into the six. And, and you know, because he got rid of his break ball that you talked about earlier, eleven, so Well, we're gonna find out after this shot. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like he's playing position on the three to go into those balls. And like you said, probably either the four or the six, either one, but softly into one of them. That's it, put another ball over there. <laughs> um, does, seven, a, does a seven pass by the ten? Seven definitely does, and then he can play the 13, and then maybe use the two to go into them. Maybe there's enough separation between the four and six that he actually, he actually can play a combo. But he still has one ball over there, too. I mean, he's got still some issues. I mean, he's not going to shoot. You think he's going to shoot the, the 13 and bump the 3 into that stuff over there? And maybe cause another cluster? Why not put them all together? We do like a challenge.
I might shoot the 10 and go into the 4 here. Or, to, or go into the 6 or the 4. If, if I cleared out the 5, since he took out the 11, he should clear out the 5, then use the 10 to go into, into those balls. He's got all these balls that go in the side. Would, the 1, the 3, the, the 13. Yeah, I would leave the 10 only because that's like the automatic insurance to the whole rack. Yeah, 5, 10. 5, 10, go into those balls. <coughs> Because both the 13, the 3, and the 1 all go in, all, all go in pockets. Well, now he may be able to go to the 10. With the first shot before that, before he shot the 15, it was a little wide. But the 5 blocks those pockets. He needs to go into the 6 here. All right. Well, he got him free. He's got the 3 balls of break shot. So. Well, now, he, you know, honestly, he can shoot the 5 now, and then and he can get himself back where he's in the open, so to speak. Here's what I like, Bobby. Tell, tell me what you think. I like 1, 4, 6, 5, 13 position on the three balls of break shot. I, I am just the opposite on one part, the first starting ball, because I wouldn't want to shoot a ball up past the side pocket at the end of the rack if I can help it. But you always want to try to find the ball that's the most straightest in, and that one ball appears that what you're saying is correct. Yeah, 1, 6, 4, 5, or 1, 6, or one, four, six, whatever he's got, you know. But, but get rid of these three balls. Play position on the five. Use the thirteen. You got on the three. Well, I mean, what you got to decide is what is going to be his break ball. I mean, the three ball. Three ball. Well, it's got to be. Yeah. I mean, the thirteen's in the rack. So well, three balls a good break ball. Well, an angle from the thirteen to the three is a little strange because the only way you're going to pick that up is from the five ball. So he's going to have yeah, to go see. six, four, five, thirteen. Yeah, I wouldn't have moved the four. He moved the four there. Wow, he just hit the three ball and it, and it barely moved. That's oh. good. He actually knocked it lower, which was better, but uh, risky. This four ball is not a good key ball. He's such a good player, he's probably going to get position on it, but the four ball is not a good key ball. Well, if he gets to it from that angle, you wouldn't want to have something that you have to draw to get position for the three. You want to roll into the rail because you can always, it's much easier to dictate the, the roll. Now he's forced to draw. Now he's forced to draw, which it's going to be a wide angle. He's going to be in the center of the table. And it's hard to tell exactly how much cut he would have. He landed perfectly. This is why straight pulls uh, such a unique game, because you can get there by so many different ways. Yeah. You know? I mean, there's no, there was no perfect angle from there. But, I mean, if you have ball in hand to shoot a three ball, you can obviously move it in a different spot. But he's really good where he's at. So we got a oh, is it 112 101 now? Is that right? Or, no, or what's the updated score? I don't know. They're both uh, close to winning the rack, and uh, Mario's at the table, so we have to assume Mario's going to close it. It's 108 101, yes. Thank, thanks, Al. I appreciate that. Slow rolled that ball. I don't think I've ever hit a ball like that <laughs> playing this game. <laughs> I would have hit that head ball and just gone to the side rail. Well, he's got the one. No balls are touching. I can't really argue with how he hit it. He's got the four to the ten as the key ball break shot if he wants, or the four to the 14. Wow, he smashed that rack. I don't think I've ever hit a ball that hard. Really punched it. Maybe the one's blocked by the 14. Well, I mean, he right now, he can just pick this rack apart. He's He's got to go into the next rack. Be, Michael, do you think he's a little early to be smelling the finish line? No. He probably smelled it two racks ago. Okay. I mean, he got out of that tough rack. That, that last rack was horrible, uh, you know, to get out of. You know, and he managed to get out of it. Well, he's just a terrific shot maker. I mean, what more can you say? I don't... I don't I can't say he doesn't know straight pool because he does, but his pattern play is a little in unconventional. But when you don't miss any balls and you're a great shot maker, you can make things happen. Yeah, and even the position on the last shot to the break shot, I mean, he had perfect speed to, to get a really nice shot in the break shot. And it kind of follows the Ortman logic. Just worry about it till the, the end you decide. <laughs> it's funny you say that about Ortman because uh, the guys I like to watch. His patterns are a little suspect, so I usually don't like to watch him, to be honest. But he has many more hundred ball runs than me. 
Yeah, there's a lot of things I don't like. Watch. I've spent a lot of time in different countries playing pool. In Japan, where they got the steering wheel on the opposite side. <laughs> I don't like to look at going down the road. Same thing. As I get back home, <laughs> it's confusing. Just such a such a strong ball pocketer and recovery game. Uh, Orman has. He, you know, that's what makes him such a fierce competitor. Yeah, I was. Um, he maybe is not playing much uh, pool right now. This would have been a great series of two weeks for him to be in the country. I if you're out there. I wish we were here, buddy. What do you do here? He's got a couple, a couple options. <clears throat> well, the problem is with a seven is that unless shooting a seven, you almost have to go into to the 11, 11 ball here, and you got to be a little careful. You can really look at the angle here to make sure you're going to go in there. I don't think he can avoid these two balls on the yeah, back Yeah, nice rail. and thick on the 11, right? Yeah. Uh, just like as thick as right, exactly. He had a perfect. He's got this 14 ball in a great position. And now realize he doesn't have. Uh, he don't, he's probably not thinking ahead, but he will in the rack. That he doesn't have to smash the next rack. He only needs three balls if he gets through this rack. Right now, Bobby, you probably don't look at this, but the two looks like it's straight in the corner, and I might shoot it with well, the stop shot. I always look at that, but get position on the eight, and then I can open up those last three balls. I got the 11 as insurance. Game well, over. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm I'm kind of of the really older generation. I you know I learned a lot from uh, I knew Moscone and and I got to speak to Lasseter quite a bit before he was gone and and they just taught me never shoot a ball past the side pocket unless you unless you have to. Right. And, and with today's equipment, um, this pocket's not exactly large. No, no, I hear you. Um, but you smell what I'm cooking, right? You play a stop shot on the two, you're perfect on the eight to go into those three last three balls. Well, the reason the why you want to get rid of the two ball now is it opens it opens up the rack for for the uh, thirteen or the nine ball, so that leaves that leaves the six and the fifteen to go. So if you shoot the unless you can get a combo here now, and that that will help really help them. Yeah, if the combos on then, then then the combos on. He don't even have to worry about the fifteen. I ball. would never shot at the two. If the combos on. Doesn't look like it's on though. He's aiming. Yeah, everybody has their. Everybody's grown up playing, you know, straight pool a little different. But it's really from our angle. We're on the sidelines. We don't have the exact angles to every ball. But the the thing is, um, I, I really think that um, shooting balls past the side pocket, if you want to try to avoid that, that's what I would do. Just like you know, basic things in pool. Don't bump the balls unless you have to. Yeah, what are, what are your five rolls, Bobby? You're a 200 ball runner. What are you, 300 ball runner? Yeah, I got two two runs over three now. But uh, um, well, the big thing I think is when the balls are free, try not to rebump them anymore. You know, because um, you just can get stuck. You can spin off the rail, let up table, and then avoid the long shots. I mean, you know, it's a nine foot table. Okay, it's 100 inches of playing, eight foot four inches. Once you divide that table in half, you got the balls on one side of the table. Then you never have a shot over four foot, and it makes the game much easier to control the cue ball. Also, when you're staying on one side of the table. Good advice, Bobby. I think Good that's advice. all five ball, all five rules that you're asking me at one time. Minimal cue ball movement. Oh, very minimal. Yeah, I mean, uh, when um, I spent a lot of time around, when I was fortunate enough to friends with Moscone, that you just never people like him, you just never saw the cue ball move very much. All right, there's I mean, another break ball. It's like watching him play was like watching paint dry. It was so boring. <laughs> but he kept it simple. And in all fairness, back then, um, the cloth wasn't fast either. So in uh, five-ounce balls instead of six. So they never let the cue ball move much anyway. But, you know, Simona's cloth has been around for hundreds of years. And... This cloth nowadays that uh, even different brands beside that, you know, it's got more speed to it. And when they brought Simona's cloth and start using it in the nine ball tournaments around 1989, 90 in the area, it changed pool a lot. For the better, actually. I like using the 11 ball as my key ball, so I go 2, 15, 13, 11, 14 ball. You said 2, 15? Yeah, whatever these two balls, 15, 13, or 13, oh, 15, okay. 11, and use the 11 ball to get on the 14 ball. It's a natural two earlier. Oh, I thought maybe middle. two. I was thinking 13. Yeah, whatever those two balls are. Get rid of these two balls. Use the 11 to get to the, the 14. 
Well, what are you going to use to get to the – oh, you're going to think he's going to use the 14 for the break shot or he's yeah, going to yeah, shoot yeah. the 15 high? He only needs three balls after this rack, so hitting high in the rack is okay. Uh, I just like the key ball to the 14 so much that I would use that. Okay. I think he's going 13, 15, 11, then go two rails to 14. That's what I just said. Oh, dude. <laughs> okay. I'm getting older. I don't hear everything, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah, 11 is just a juicy Michael's ball to get on the 14. Michael's me out of the booth. I'm not hearing well. I'm doing no such thing. Okay. Well. Since he's probably uh, going to get perfect on this 14 ball, uh, what do you think the difference is between a 100 and a 200 ball runner? Uh, Semi-pro and world champion. Yeah, that's so. That's two different, two what different. Are, what are the keys? Oh, you mean to get to that? Yeah. Um, well, um, running a hundred balls is isn't really a big accomplishment for any of these players here, for sure. Running two hundred does become a situation that's a whole different breed, because <clears throat> there's a difference when you get to fourteen racks is one ninety six. Right, right. I mean, you got to go into a 15th rack of balls in a row. I mean, there's just so many variables that can change. You know. So you don't Thorsten this because you only need three balls? Well, he's, you know. I might Thorsten this just to make sure I. There's no chance. You would have, no to, issues. You would have to kill me to hit these balls really hard. I don't want to get stuck on the stack. I don't think you no, can. Medium but. stroke. There they are. Turn the lights Two, four. Up. Turn the lights up. Two, four, this good match night. is done. Yes. It could even be 2-9 from here. It's not going to do nothing but do a cue ball, probably. Yeah, you called it. Or 3. All right, well, guys. the match been conceded. Um, is what is he, he on? Is he on a run? What's his run right now? 